The last time Phil Jackson was on the losing end of a playoff series, Kobe Bryant was 16. That was 1995. Jackson already had three championships under his belt. Not bad for a guy who just eight years earlier had quit his job coaching the CBA's Albany Patroons and contemplated going to grad school. Instead, Jackson himself became a professor of sorts. Is he the greatest teacher ever, or has he simply had classes full of geniuses? A question pondered by David Aldrich. He has won titles with a mustache, a beard, and a soul patch. With Michael Jordan and Bobby Hansen, Kobe Bryant and Mark Madsen. For Jerry Krause and Jerry Reinsdorf, Jerry West and Jerry Buss. It's my um, belief and my experience that the third victory in uh, three successive years is always the most unique and most difficult one to fight your way through, and this certainly was this year. Phil Jackson has won more titles in his sport than Vince Lombardi won in his, or Casey Stengel in his, or Pat Summit in hers. And yet, no one says Lombardi won only because Bart Starr was his quarterback and Ray Nitschke his middle linebacker. We got older, we got you know less talented, yet he hasn't done anything yet. I, I, mean, I don't know. You know, I used to feel that way. You know, when I said, man, I could have coached the Bulls with Mike and Scotty. But this is the bottom line. In his first six seasons, Michael Jordan had won nothing. After Jackson became head coach of the Bulls, Jordan won six titles. In his first seven seasons, Shaquille O'Neal had won nothing. In Jackson's first three seasons with the Lakers, O'Neal has three rings. When Phil got here, and then, you know, one thing, you can just see Kobe's eyes light up. You know, I remember he says, we'll let the dynasty begin. And I was thinking to myself, hey, he's been a little bit cocky, but, you know, he was just being confident. Phil's been able to, to do it with the system that he believes in. He's been able to get players to play together. Uh, you know, and have an opportunity to 3 P with three different teams. I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. An accident of history? Well, Jackson says he was fortunate to get back in the NBA as a coach after his playing days were done. The NBA has a uh, applica uh, aptitude test that they give to post-career players that I took after my career in 80-81. And I qualified for outdoor adventure, a guide, minister, lawyer, and a, a cook. But Jackson seems to have been born to do this, even though his routine is familiar. He still beats the Tom Tom before games, still edits subliminal messages into his team's game videos, still leads the players in Tai Chi and meditation, still dates the owner's daughter, and still, during timeouts, reads the Bazooka Joe cartoon that comes with his piece of bubble gum. There are definitely times when I think to myself, what are you reading over there? <laughs> his motivational methods are sometimes as transparent as saran wrap, but they still work. He knows how to get under their skin. He knows how to motivate them. He knows how to make them work hard. He knows that if he blasts me in the paper, then I won't respond. I'll just go out and you know, just try to dominate the next game. And he's been doing that the last couple of years. And Every now and then I'll say something back and, you know, you people will probably think we have a problem, but we don't have a problem. It's total respect. But what most don't see, what Jackson won't allow them to see, is that the work he does to make his team successful often takes place behind closed doors or lower curtains. That's why he can sit so seemingly placidly during games. When he whistles, we know it's okay, it's, you know, playtime is over, it's time to, you know, to be on an alert. If you come into one of our practice, yeah, you get all of that. You get him pacing up and down, you get the yelling, the screaming. His coaching gets done beforehand, so he should, he should be able to sit down and, and watch his, the work he's done behind the doors and enjoy it like a fan does. Jackson says he doesn't know now what he will do when his contract expires in two years. That would be fitting for a man who has made a career and a life out of living in the moment. The message obviously is always about being attentive and playing each play in front of you and, and playing each moment in basketball. That's all there is, what's right in front of you. So uh, that's the message. The message regarding Jackson's career is fairly straightforward. He wins a lot. Pulled even with Red Arbach on Thursday night by capturing his ninth title. When it comes to overall playoff wins, he's now on top all by his lonesome. One win ahead of Pat Riley. That's a very insightful, Dave. Meanwhile, no one's had harder luck in the postseason than Jerry Sloan. No coach has won more NBA playoff games without winning the title. All five coaches on the list, this list still have time to change their luck, though, because they're all still active.